Okay, I squeezed out Rose Matter by Grumbacher. Thalo Red Rose here. Permanent Red Rose and Magenta. Permanent Magenta. A lot of these reds are um, fugitive colors. They will fade or I believe darken into black over time. Alizarin is one of those. So when it says permanent, I guess it's going to hold up better for you now. Here's what happens if you mix white. You sort of get a milk of magnesia pink. Now when you mix this uh, permanent yellow light with it, Let's see what happens. It's gonna go more orange, but it's gonna be gonna give you a lot more brilliance to the color. And you see that in the middle. This is rose matter. That's pretty close to what he's used in the center of this flower. All right, let's see what happens with the Salo Red Rose. These are mostly for flower painting. And since I haven't painted that many flowers, see that one's a little bit more violet. Pretty. His colors aren't that vivid though. It's more like this rose matter. This one is permanent magenta. And that's definitely purple. So that's not what we want. And permanent rose. Pretty purple. Yep. <clears throat> so we might be able to use this to brighten up a little bit with, and I think rose matter is going to be the best bet. Now here's a tube of Winton Permanent Rose. Let's see how that compares. That's a lot like Thalo. Let's see what happens when we pull that down with some white. And this is the whole purpose of, yep, same thing. Even though that's a student grade, the Winton is a student grade color. That's really a fuchsia pink, which is hard to mix if you just have cad red light or cad red medium. So I think my favorite so far is the Rose Matter by Grumbacher. And I think we can almost use that right out of the tube with, let's mix up a green. I'm gonna use ultramarine blue. I want to make a dark green and some yellow ochre. Let's see what happens. Yep, that'll be fun. Let's make it a dull. He's used almost a black background because of that silver pot that is in the original painting. If you want to lighten this more, you can mix more yellow ochre with it. I also have this pretty permanent green light or cinnabar green. That's a pretty green. It's kind of a middle of the road primary green. All right, I have um, several brushes out. I have a long ivory Egbert, this is called. And that has a lot of bounce to it. You could use that for these petals. Maybe I'm going to try it. And then I've got two size six rosemary filberts, ivories, and a long filbert in a size two. I grabbed a couple of these mongoose brushes as well. 
Um, once I get wet and wet, I might switch to those. No little bitty detail brushes. We're gonna try to use big brushes for this. All right, I squeezed out some, I went ahead and squeezed out some sap green. It's pretty similar to the ultramarine blue and yellow ochre, it's just a little bit darker. And I've got some charcoal and I'm gonna go ahead and decide about how big my flower's gonna be. Very rarely do flowers just face right at you like this. Typically they're pointing in different directions. So uh, I just do the big simple shape, which in this case is just a big circle. And if the flower were facing this way, it would be an elliptical shape. And the most important thing when I'm drawing or painting flowers is to always be mindful of where the center is because everything that you do is going to be mindful of the center. Every stroke is going to go toward the center. Um, if this flower were facing this way and the center was, say, here, then all your strokes were, would come in this way and you'd have some foreshortened petals on this side. But it is a good idea to go ahead and decide how big the flower is going to be and that's about life size for a peony um, so there's really not much to do here this is going to be a pretty quick study i think i'll try the the uh, pink one here and a white one down here so i've toned the back of the sketchbook with zinser and acrylic green uh, i didn't want to do the black I wanted to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of green around the edges of this one and probably the maybe some blue around that one. So I'm going to go around kind of keeping in mind the shape of this flower. It's not perfectly round. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of the green in first just to get a feeling of where that flower is going to lay. There's probably 10 different ways you could do this or more. I want a pretty dark background. And I know watching um, the flower painting video from, I believe it was Kathy Anderson this past week. She does a quick mass in. This is very absorbent, this sketchbook is. But that just kind of gives me a little bit of an idea of how big that flower is going to be and a little bit of the shape. And this uh, filbert is working really well. So I'm going to switch. I'm going to leave the green, and I'm going to switch to another size 6 ivory filbert. Got a paper towel in my hand. I wet my uh, brush with a little bit of and I'm going to go ahead and start with the center of this flower. Um, that's really not dark enough. So, and remember these reds are pretty much transparent. Let's see. Uh, rose matter is transparent. So it's not gonna cover real strong. I'm gonna mix a little of this other color to pink it up a little. But you want your darkest dark to be in the center of this flower. And remember, reds get really powerful, so they'll get into everything. Um, that's gonna go on pretty thin. I'm gonna wipe my brush off. And then I'm gonna go into my pile of the yellow, yellow light. And I think I might bring this green down just a bit more. A couple places, let's see, there's a petal there. I can kind of decide how many petals I've got. One, two, actually that, there's like a petal there. A big one there there we don't want to be coloring book ish with this we want to try to well i didn't pay any attention to these petals did i all right and i'm loading the brush up pretty thick um 
You want to think about the hands of the clock. Let's start with this one. That's a little too bright, so I've already, I'm gonna grab a little, because this is pink, I'm gonna grab a little bit of green to just dull it down, especially right here in the shadows, yep. There we go. Boy, it's challenging to get this color. I'm wondering if it's more of a quinacridone red. Grab some of that. It's really a shadow. This petal right here on the side is really in shadow. Has a bit of an orange feel to it. And every petal should go toward the center. This one's really got a lot of green in it. The green is what neutralizes it so it's not quite so pink. All right, um, now you, I hope you mixed, squeezed out a lot of white because you need to really dip into your white. I came back over and I've got a pretty good pool of white here and I'm mixing a, a pinker pile here a little bit of yellow in it, just to orange it up. And a lighter pile for the light spots on the petals. All right, so I'm moving in there. That's a little closer to the right color. And again, every stroke is gonna go toward the center with your flower. And try to think again about the hands of the clock so, and if your brush is large enough to make the petal with one stroke, that's all the more, all the better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, straight down at six o'clock. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine petals. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Wiping my brush. Seven. Eight. And then this one's really thick down here. Nine. All right, so that looks pretty, pretty rough but we're not done. So there's this one, there's this one. Watch um, some of my friends paint flowers and they hold the brush differently. I'm holding it like this. Again, pulling in. Now it's really easy to chalk this up, which is what I'm already doing. So I want to come back in here with kind of a soft, softer mongoose brush. I'm gonna get a little bit of medium, with some of this dark center color. I'm gonna come back in here and pull out my center again. 
this nice dark. Put those darks back in if I can. I'm going to wipe the brush a lot so I don't muddy everything up. Put a little bit of green with it just to darken it even more, especially right in here. Whoops. Really the darkest right here. All right, I really like the peachy color. Which is right around in here. So, I'm not, I've done some flowers. I'm not a big flower painter. My flowers have been um, grisa and glazing. So, it's another animal for me. Let's see if we can brighten that one up just a bit. The center here. Once you get it wet, see, it lays on a lot better. All right, now I'm gonna get my other mongoose and I wanna come around the edges a little bit and try to carve down with the sap green and a little bit of red to darken it. Just to carve out the shapes of these petals a little. That certainly, that dark color really makes them pop forward more. Might not hurt to have some medium while you're doing this because the medium helps this dark color go on uh, better. Once you start dipping into the pink, you need to clean your brush off. So keep that uh, paper towel or cloth in your hand as much as possible. All right, so I'm gonna lay that one down. I'm gonna come back over here to the uh, magenta mongoose, just a nice soft brush, and I wanna try to soften some of these petals a little.
and just make this first layer kind of a blur. This petal down here is pretty orange. It has a real orange tint to it. I am gonna try the palette knife on these bigger petals. See what happens. That's what makes these look so pretty is that thick paint on there. Yeah, that's what you need. I'm just scooping up all that light, putting it on in a couple of spots. This is gonna take a while to dry, just so you know. Now, it really looks like this light color is just kind of gobbed on. And when you use a palette knife, you want to turn it different ways. It's a little bit like a fan brush. Um, you see people using fan brushes and they make the same stroke over and over and over in the same direction and it just doesn't look good. So you want to try to turn the palette knife around so that you're not replicating your stroke. You want to keep that dark center so you don't want to we may have to let it dry and come in here and pop a few highlights back in it in about a month after this thick red paint dries so now this one's sticking out too much And really, if you drag this palette knife over it, you can lift some of the paint off and you'll see the green underneath, which is not a bad thing either. A little bit of a petal right there. So I feel like this one here is a little bit out of shape, out of whack. 
So I'm going back in with the green. Try to break it up a little. I don't mind that little tag too bad, really, right there. So I think painting flowers is a lot about just being loose and rhythmic with your strokes. I like that little curve. And coming back in and cutting around the edges of your flowers. I think the palette knife is really the key, <clears throat> but these strokes are too flat right here. So the trick is, how do you go back in here with your dark? Kind of mushy in. Yeah, that's good. Wipe my brush. This is a nice long mongoose. And I want a stroke kind of coming up like that. Yeah, that's better. So you can put them on and then you can go back in and move them around. Cause some of these strokes are kind of coming at us. Or maybe there's a little pink over here too. That's pretty, like another flower. I don't know if I'm gonna do much more to it. I wish this was a little bit more glowy right in here like his. I don't know how quick they were. I think I can improve on this one some more. But I can also goof it up too. So I don't want to spend too much more time on it. With all that thick white paint, it's going to be real easy to goof that up. All right, let's see if I can go back with my big brush or maybe better yet, the palette knife. And I've used a big ton of white paint, so you will have to have a pretty good size batch of white paint ready to do this. I do like the curls I see to some of those um, petals that are really thick and curled. I don't know if I can get that. See, I got white on my brush. I forgot to wipe it. So be really careful about that or you're gonna have a big m milky mess. I think I'll leave that okay alone. Okay, let's go, let's try a white one now. I'm gonna have to clean my brushes up and mix some more paint, but I don't think I'll start. All right, so I'm gonna try now this white one from another one of his studies, or one of another one of Dan Gearhart's paintings. Uh, I think I'll, I really like the one on the bottom. It has a lot of depth. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do that one. I'm gonna, I'd like to do that one because it looks better, but it, the top half of it's missing. So maybe I'll do it right here. So here's the center part as if this were a daffodil. And here's a petal. Here's a petal. There's another smaller center right there. Here's a petal, one in the background here. A little small one. A little small one there. That doesn't look right. Maybe it is though. It's awfully big. So maybe I'll bring it in a little smaller. I'm 
make each one of these petals a little bit smaller. I turned the light on and it's starting to get dark. So the color was very bluish and I have the balanced fluorescent lights on now and the color is a little bit truer. I'm gonna start on this white one on the bottom as it's getting dark and I wanna try to get that in while it's still daylight. All right, so I'm mixing up some yellow ochre and white. And I'm also, I've got some sap green. I'm gonna mix up a little bit of a green gray color. And remember, <clears throat> if you want to dull your, your green, just grab a little bit of red to mix in there. Dull it down some. A little bit of pink in there, which is fine because I have that on my on my brushes. So I'm going to get some pure yellow ochre. And I'm going to grab a little of this yellow light. You may see that in a couple places in the center of this flower. So that's all I'm going to use. And I'm going to use pure sap green to go around the edges. My palette after I finished. And you see I've just used yellow ochre. I did add some red in with that sap green to brown it up a little. And same over here. There's yellow ochre, so a little bit of raw sienna, but it's mostly just a white yellow ochre with a little green in it for the, the base of that white flower. All right, I'm going to start off with this one the way I did the other one. I'm going to go around the edges of the petals first to just kind of give myself a map of where each petal needs to go with that just pure sap green. Oh, it's really easy to lose, the, lose yourself in where you are with these petals. So think about the hands of the clock and come in a little bit more um, come in a little bit over your your drawing lines. Let's see. Think about these petals. Let's get these in. This is going to look really different because the one he's done is on a, a lavender, bluish lavender background, and this is going to be on a dark background. And there's some kind of greenish gray back here. I'm not going to worry too much about this upper half of the flower. We might all decide we want to become flower painters after this. All right, for the center part, I am going to change brushes. I'm going to go back to, uh, actually, I got a clean number six filbert here, a four filbert, and that's okay. I always switch my brushes first. And I've got a rag here, and I'm going to go ahead and do the dark center first. And that is a very... Let me just look at what, how it looks here. Yeah, it is the yellow ochre and sap green, or if you mixed up your green and you've got yellow ochre and ultramarine blue, that's what that is. And I'm just going to do it right here in the center first. And remember when you paint white flowers, they're never white. You're always wise if you'll start with the kind of a green gray color and then lay your whites in on top. Now it gets more yellow over here. And I'm thinking about that big center. I've got yellow on the brush now, so I can put some yellow on this petal. Whoops, a little bit too light, but we can correct it. A little bit here, a lot up here. It's just yellow ochre with a little white. It's pretty soft. That 
one's a little bit more yellow as it goes down the petal. A little bit of yellow here in the center. Think about the center again. Here's the center of the flower. So all your petals need to go toward the center. Now I'm gonna try this big Egbert. Let's see what it does. And I have my yellow ochre and white mixture. And I'm just gonna smush it on and pull it toward the center. Eh, didn't do too good. Paint's a little thick. This is another really light one. I'm gonna mush it, pull it up, twist it. Thinking about the center. I'm gonna mush it, pull it up and twist it. Same here, except I'm gonna pull it straight up. Over here, not quite as white, so I'll probably need to have that mixed down with a little. If you're not sure, just <clears throat> use yellow ochre and green. <clears throat> it's easy to go back in here and lighten, lighten these up. You don't want to go too light with it, though, to start with. Over here, this side's a little bit darker than this side. And then let's see about the palette knife down here on the bottom. And this is a good way to use your extra paint. You can come back in here and just load up one side of the palette knife and pull that up. This petal is a little more squared off. This one has a little more almost pure white on the end. That one's all in shadow. And then there's some really beautiful um, bright yellow in the center. I'm gonna see if I can get that first. It's kind of an orangey yellow. Some brighter here. a little bit of an orangey color up here. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And we don't want it to look like a daffodil. So be careful and don't overdo that. Wiping my brush. I'm sitting way back from it to video, but just remember that you'll do a better job if you stay back. This is in shadow. This is in shadow. I'm dipping back into the sap green with some yellow ochre in it. And that's really uh, got a little bit more, maybe some raw sienna in it. I'm not opposed to using that. That's pretty. Yeah, it's a little bit more what I see right along in here. A little bit there. A little bit, whoops. There. A little bit here. That just warms it up a little. That's some raw sienna. So this, this glowy area in the middle, I want to make it a little bigger than it should be so that when I lay some other colors in, I don't completely lose it all. I want to lay this thick paint back in the top. I don't want to lose it all. And I'm going to go back around the edge with the dark green again. So that'll really help it. 
So now here's where you need a good pile of um, your white with a little bit of yellow ochre mixed in. You don't want this to be pure white. And then you could grab a little of that cad yellow light too. That just brightens it up a little and put some sunshine in it. All right, so. Here we go. Um, before I do that, let me go one shade lighter up here before I do that, just to give it some texture. If you're going to work your way from dark to medium, then light. It's better to, to start with the darkest dark. I can go back in and push some of this dark again, but <clears throat> that's too light. Small palette knife. I have a little bit more control with than a really big one. So I'm gonna start off with that before I add this really light. So here I go now. I'm gonna start here. That's a big gob there. Remember the center. Always be working your way toward the center. There's a little bit of dark in the middle of these petals. So I'm gonna come over here and grab, I'll put a little bit of red with my greenish color to dull it down so it's not so green. I'm gonna come back in here and put a little bit of dark back in there. See what happens, yeah. Maybe some here. That's too dark. Eh, I'm not loving that one. Let's see what it needs. Let's go back with a mongoose brush that's soft and some pure sap green with no white or yellow in it. I want some nice dark. I might have to keep squeezing that out. You can put a little ultramarine blue with it if you want to to darken it. All right, so I'm gonna come back in here. Really darken this up. Kind of reshape these petals a little. They're kind of squared off. It's really looking like a buttercup. And that is not what it is. Remember your darkest darks will have a lot of reflections in them if you don't knock those off before they dry. Going left to right. And it does work better to put a little medium with it. Whoops, not too much medium. This one feels too big here. So let's see, put a little bit of dark right there. And it's really dark on this upper Part right here. Let's see if I can get that in. Super dark.
All right, I'm gonna clean my brush now and I'm gonna get a another mongoose that's clean. I'm gonna come back in here and wiggle some of these transitions on these petals a little so they're not so. Keep wiping your brush, zigzag it. There we go, that's better. And then peonies have these ruffledy edges that I don't really have. Let me see if I can push into the white and see if I can get those a little more roughly. The ed edges are kind of gobbed on too, like they're curling a little bit. I don't have enough texture in here, so I need to work on that a little bit more. One has some petals. So if you put it on and it feels too disjointed, then likely you just need to come back around and pull some colors in. Now the worst thing you can do is, is start just over blending it. So that's where going ahead and designing the perimeter of the flower helps me first. Whoops, making sure your brush is clean. You start dragging light color into that dark, you're gonna make a mess. Um, and what do I, I mean, there's probably, normally there would be more back in here. Let me see if I can just gray that out a little bit with some kind of petals back in there. So it looks like the flower is messed up. All right. This one's a little off. This one could have some more light. And again, if you want to just gob it on there. Yeah. Just do it, just go for it. All right, I wanna go back to my palette knife and scoop me up a good pile of yellow ochre and just a mixture of yellow ochre and white, mostly white. So top, top, top it on there a little bit. Big gob of it right here. So I'm using my brush to kind of double load that back side because I want to use. I'm using the back side with the palette knife. A lot of people feel awkward using a palette knife because they haven't used one much, and you just want to keep all the paint on the back side. Usually, I just load up the edge, but I had such a big gob on there. You could use two palette knives if you want to and scrape if you accidentally get it around in the front and scrape it. All right, so again, I've scooped up. Most of it's on this back side. If you do get it around, you could just scrape it off and put it back on that back side. Um, that's what you want. That's your goal is to use the back. And I think a few little strokes this way is what it needs. Again, I'm going towards the center with just about all of my strokes. All right, so I, I scoot it back. You need to make sure you get back from this. And the center is really dark right here. So come back in here and put some darks in there, make that dark enough. Just gonna give you more depth and it's got a, more of a yellow ochre than a greenish tint to it, especially as it goes into the rest of the petal here. If you get too dark with your flower, then you can come back in with a lighter color and pull back towards the center. It's kind of always a push-pull thing with flowers. So you barely hit it. These mongoose brushes work great. 
come back up like that and a little bit like that whoops squeaky chair